Basic Metaphysics, a lecture by Jonathan Barlow Gee. Part 1. The Taurus. To understand the shape and properties of four space manifolds, we begin with an examination of this familiar diagram displaying the standard elliptical orbit of a body in space around a dual focal point. The labels are as follows, clockwise from left to right. The sphere in orbit is labeled D. The orbit itself is labeled M. And the dual focal points are labeled ST and TS. The meanings of these labels is adumbrated on at length in my book, The Metaphysician's Desk Reference. However, their significance to this model is unimportant here, considering only the form of the model itself. The next form of this model shows us the orbital plane from along the edge, from which vantage we may see a further twist in the shape of the orbit such that it resembles a sideways figure 8, the symbol of infinity. Here, the labels remain the same as before. D signifies now two positions of the orb in its orbit around the dual foci, labeled here also ST and TS. The twisting orbit is labeled M. In this form of the model, we may see that due to the optical illusion formed by looking at the usual elliptical loop from along the edge, two points on opposite sides of the ellipse appear to converge in the center between the twin focal points. In the third iteration of this model, we symbolize this superposition of opposite points on the original ellipse by inserting a third position for D, the orbiting sphere. The label and shape of the orbit M remains a sideways figure 8, however now we see that this superposition point of illusory intersection can be symbolized by a third position of D, the body in space, that actually signifies two foreshortened and visually overlapping points in the elliptical orbit M from the original diagram. Thus, we may now also see that this third superposition point for D along M has an equator co-circumferential to the circle, originally signifying the dual focal points, such that this superimposed midpoint position for D sits within the center between the focal points ST and TS. In this next form of the original model, we further elaborate on the superposition midpoint of the orbiting sphere, D, by proportioning upon it the usual depiction for the effect on its poles of precession, labeled P. The semblance of this addition shows that an upward pointed cone tapers asymptotically in an arced surface from a circular base below the midpoint of D, the orb, while another identical cone points downward from above such that the tips of the two arced cones intersect in the center of the midpoint of D. In this form of the model, we may see the co-circumferential equatorial circle signifying the conical angle of the orb, D's, polar precession are perpendicular on the left and right sides of the twisted figure 8 orbital ellipse, M, to the position of them relative to the central overlapping position of the sphere D in its orbit. In short, we see the midpoint position of D operates at a right angle to the orientation of D on the left and right. Thus, as I am attempted to prove in my book, the MPDR, the orbit of the precessing poles of D forms the exterior and the sideways figure 8 angle of the ellipse form the interior of a standard four-space torus. What we are seeing in this final form of the original model is one-half of a torus. In this complete model of a torus, we see the manner the four-space torus evolves from one-space singularity. First, the point expands into a line shown here operating at a right angle along a vertical axis in purple. This line is then rotated at this angle around its singularity origin point 
to form a plane, which is shown as the red spiral in the middle signifying polar precession. This red spiral line traces the plane space surface of the line's rotation around its midpoint as a wavelength, shown in yellow, signifying the equator of the torus. The red spiral line on this plane surface also rotates around itself, and this is shown expanded as the blue spirals on the left and right connected around the toroid equator as a green coil. This gives us all the motions that a point on a torus can move along. The essential concept of the torus is that it it is a four-space expansion of the one-space singularity in four directions. The resulting shape is essentially as appears here and is called a torus or hypersphere. The usual nomenclature distinction between these terms is that a torus is a hypersphere seen from along its equatorial side, while a hypersphere is a torus seen from above its polar axis. In this diagram, again from my book, the MPDR, we may see that a toroid equator surrounds the nested hypersphere. The concept of the torus or hypersphere is that it is a sphere within a sphere, where both spheres have the same volume, symbolizing a single sphere moving in the invisible direction of time. The torus, as we see here from above one pole on the left, and from above the opposite pole on the right, obeys the laws of wave mechanics and in turn determines the wavelength motion of spherical particles. We see the three directions of possible motion that a point on a torus can travel in as a large blue arrow around the toroid's exterior circumference, as a series of small green arrows signifying particle rotation inside the toroid, either in the inner or outer hypersphere, and as a red wavelength measuring a spiral line drawn along the plane surface of the toroid equator. To return to the complete toroid form of the original model from the MPDR, we see the combination of the motions within the inner sphere and upon the exterior sphere cause the polar precession of a point as it moves along all these possible directions over time. As a point moves along an elliptical orbit, the poles of the point precess such that over time they reverse orientation, first at a right angle, then to 180 degrees opposite from their original orientation, and finally back again. This perpetual cycle forms the overall model of a four-space torus from the side or hypersphere from above. Because this depiction itself is flat, we may see it as a shadow of this higher dimensional shape cast onto a 2D plane space. Because a torus is 4D, it also casts a 3D shadow. The shadow of the hypersphere is the simple 3D orb, but the shadow of the torus, a hypersphere seen from the side, is shaped like a circularly self-connected tube. This tube has a circular circumference, however if you were to trace the motion of a single point on the exterior surface of the toroid circumference, you would follow it as it formed a phi spiral. If you were to take the phi spiral formed on the exterior surface of a torus as it revolves inward on itself and combine it with the pi spiral motion of a point on the interior of the torus as it revolves around in a circular tube, the result would be this diagram showing the shadows of these two types of spiral, the exponential phi and the arithmetic pi on a flat plane space with their twin origin points exactly overlapped. The significance of combining these two spirals as flat shadows in this way is to depict the point where the interior of the torus becomes the exterior of the torus as a parameter where both spirals, inner pi and outer phi, coincide.
For shorthand, I refer to this pair of spirals throughout all my writings on metaphysics as a single phi over pi spiral. When we double such an already combined phi over pi spiral with an exact duplicate of itself in mere reflection by overlapping both centroids onto a single origin point, we arrive at this depiction which is best thought of as a shadow cast by the motions of a point on a hypersphere seen from above or below one of its poles. When we double the phi over pi spirals at a point along their axis line, but not exactly overlapping one another on a conjoined origin point, we arrive at this model, best seen as a shadow depiction of point motion along the toroid edge or the hypersphere seen from the side. If we flatten the motion of a point on a torus surface into a plane, the result is this autocorrelated mapping, the so-called seven-color coding pattern of the surface of a torus. When the space labeled 1 is connected to the space labeled 7, inside a coil formed by the spaces between 1 through 7, we see yet another form of the torus, or hypersphere, seen from along its equator. This seven-color coating maps onto the surface of the round tube torus such that it forms the phi spiral upon it. Part 2. The Tesseract To begin our examination of the four space manifolds based on geometric polygons besides the simple circle expanded from the singular origin point down the center of a line, we look first toward the tesseract or hypercube. The three space shadow of the four space hypercube is the regular cube with six square shaped sides, twelve edge lines, and eight corners where three edge lines connect three square faces all at 90 degree angles. The standard terms of measurement for the dimensions implied by these three edge intersecting corners oriented at right angles to one another are length or distance, breadth or width, and depth or volume. The hypercube is a symbolic depiction of a single cube changing over time and is represented by two cubes overlapping. The standard form of the hypercube is as one cube nested within another cube. This depiction is an optical illusion symbolizing the true shape of a hypercube, however is itself merely a flat 2D shadow of the true form of such. A real four-space hypercube is comprised of twin cubes, both of equal volume, while in this standard symbolic depiction in 2D of the shape of the 4D manifold, the inner cube appears to have smaller volume than the larger cube that it is nested within. Because of the intersection of the three vertices at the origin of length, width, and depth, there are three shadows in two space that can be cast to show the true form of the four space hypercube. The first was the nested hypercube seen from above one of the midpoints of one of its sides. The second is this combination where one cube sits on top of a second of exactly equal area, which signifies the shadow cast from a hypercube when viewed above the midpoint of one of its linear edges. This format is called the hypercube's antipode position. The third form of 2D shadow cast by the 4D hypercube is the tesseract. The outline in flat two space of the tesseract is octagonal or eight-sided and eight-pointed. This outline contains an arrangement of horizontal, vertical, and diagonal lines that forms at the center of the shape 
a smaller star pattern called an octagram. The octagon and octogram are to the 4D hypercube the equivalent to in two space the line and dot. The octogram contained within the octagon itself also contains an octagon and this pattern can be self-replicated on smaller and larger scales infinitely because it is a gnomon, a form of parallelogram similar to the more organic patterns of fractals. The apparently octagonal shadow cast by the four-space tesseract is also an optical illusion that symbolizes the dual cube arrangement. In this depiction, we see that one cube, shown in red, is oriented at a 45-degree angle to the other cube, shown in blue. As each corner of one cube shifts along this angle to connect to the same corner of the other cube, it forms the lines inside the octagon that define the 2D depiction of the tesseract. The pattern depicted in this flat 2D shape is merely the shadow of a hypercube seen from above one of its corners in four space. Because the 4D hypercube spans as a measure of distance, the change we consider a temporal duration by using the motif of two cubes of the same volume. It changes the shape of the shadow it casts in 3D by motion just as in two space its shadow is determined by orientation to the hypercube of the point of view. The hypercube's shadow in three space thus appears to transform endlessly just as in two space it had exactly three shadows cast from different points of view. While the nested antipode and tesseract hypercube patterns in 2D reflect the faces, edges, and corners of the 3D shapes length, width, and depth form in 4D, the true form of the tesseract expresses the fourth dimensional direction, or change over time, as motion in the orientation between two equal volumed cubes. Here is a depiction of the motion of the tesseract through itself as one cube trades places with the other by both passing through one another. Here is another simulation of a hypercube to demonstrate the change in size between the two cubes as they pass through one another affects motion using a sphere moving forward in a line to signify the standard arrow of entropy, i.e. time. Because the hypercube is a four-space manifold object, it is not visually depictable without using motion. It is commonly known as having countless 2D visual depictions describing shadows cast by the hypercube when it is seen from various angles. These sorts of 2D pictures hint at further applications of studying the tesseract shadows by applying them to a 3D model as directions of motion. When we use this method, we may see that there are four axes of the 3D shadow of the four space cube. The first two-space shadow we follow as a direction of motion along an axis in the 3D shadow of the 4D hypercube shows the single cube rising vertically. Next, we see the hypercube's motion along the antipode angle, where it elongates to the length of the double cube at its midpoint, rising up the vertical axis. The next form of spatial shadow we see cast within the three-space model is a triangle morphing along the horizontal axis. The fourth iteration of motion inside the 3D hypercube's shadow is also along the horizontal axis. This morphing process is called a slice that cuts from corner to corner 
of the 3D shadow of a tesseract. At one corner, it begins as a tetrahedron, expands in its midpoint into an octahedron, and then collapses again to a tetrahedron at the opposite corner. The presence of the dual tetrahedrons at opposite corners of the tesseract slice is significant because it implies the presence of another form of hypershape, the hypertetrahedron, shown here as one tetrahedron of smaller volume nested inside another of larger volume, signifying the higher dimensional equation of their volumes as change along the invisible axis of time. The same nesting of the hypercube shows it from above one side and is one of the three such axial shadows in 2D cast from the hypercube because the cube connects three edged sides at each corner. A tetrahedron has a total of only four sides with each corner connecting three edged faces like the cube. The nested tetrahedrons of different volumes show the 4D hypertetrahedron's 3D shadow from above one of its sides. A stelloctahedron is the co-origin point nesting of two equal volume tetrahedrons. It is the equivalent for the hypertetrahedron of the equal volume pair of cubes at antipode for the hypercube. It shows the hypertetrahedron from above one of its edges. The final form of shadow cast by the hypertetrahedron explains why it appears within the slice from corner to corner of the hypercube. Because a stalactahedron can be formed between eight equidistant corners, it can also be nested within a 3D cube. When this is done and the shadow of the form is cast onto a 2D plane space, the shape it assumes is this, a unicursal hexagram formed of two pentagrams, one upright above and one inverse below, surrounded by a hexagon. The exterior circumference of the hexagon is formed from the shadow cast by the cube. When this is removed, the interior lines that remain connecting the six points are the shadow in a 2D plane space of the stelloctahedron in 3D. This signifies the cubical hypertetrahedron's shadow when cast from a point of view above one of its corners. This is also why it appears in the diagonal slice from corner to corner in the hypercube. Part 3. The Hypercross The tesseract shape in 2D signifies the motion of a 3D cube along the 4D axis of time. The nested hypercube shape in 2D signifies the stationary midpoint of this motion as the shadow of a 3D model where the two cubes are not of equal volume. At antipode point, seen from above one of the cube's edges, rather than sides as in the nested position or corners as in the tesseract pattern, there appear to be twin cubes of equal volume, one above the other below. This final form was known to ancient metaphysicians, who designed a shape to signify the antipode hypercube in flat 2D space using two hexagons overlapping such that the upper hexagon's lowest corner overlaps the midpoint of the lower hexagon and the lower hexagon's upper corner overlaps the midpoint of the upper hexagon. This shape signifies the antipode hypercube seen from above a corner as a 3D model then recast as a shadow onto a 2D plane space also from a point of view directly above one corner of the 3D model. They called this model Hakabalah, meaning literally the body of God. The modern form of this ancient lattice pattern shows the same essential shape with one significant discrepancy.
the middle pillar of Sephiroth points on the vertical axis have slipped down such that now the lowest point is subtended below the lower hexagon. This symbolizes for the hypercube the same unfolding idea as may be applied to tessellating the sides of a three-space cube. Here we see how the six sides of the standard regular cube unfold into a single plane space pattern as a tessellation of the six square shaped sides. The resulting shape is commonly called the Calvary cross pattern such that four of the square sides surround a fifth while below the lowest of these is subtended the sixth square side. When a hypercube is unfolded into a 3D tessellated pattern, the result is called a hypercross. Because the shadow cast by the nested hypercube is the same in plane space as that of a three space cube seen from directly above one side, the same effect should be expected to occur for the shape of the hypercross, such that it would cast a three space shadow of multiple cubes, but in two space assume the same form as the unfolded cube, that being the common Calvary cross. It is also believed that when a hypercube is unfolded into a three space shape, that the form it would take would be comprised of eight cubes, one for each corner of the standard three space regular cube. This reasoning yields a 3D version of a Calvary pattern hypercross, where each of the six sides of a central cube expand into six cubes added to the original seventh, wherein the eighth cube is subtended to the lowest cube. Just as the 2D Calvary cross pattern is not a single source shadow, but shows the tessellation of all six square shaped sides of the 3D cube, the two space shadow of the morphing tesseract appears the same as that of a rotating cube, and likewise the shadow in two space of the 3D Calvary pattern model of a hypercross should be expected to show the regular tessellation of six squares of the flat two space Calvary cross motif. However, the shadow in two space of the 3D model of a Calvary version of a 4D hypercross does not show the same shape as the regular 2D Calvary cross of six squares. Instead, the shadow in two space shows up as a simple five square cross where four squares of equal area surround a central fifth. Thus, the actual shape of the hypercross is not a Calvary pattern with a subtended eighth cube below the lowest cube of six surrounding a central seventh on all its square sides. It is actually, as shown here as a 2D depiction of a 3D model, only the six cubes surrounding the central seventh. However, there does exist an extra eighth cube. Only in this form, seen from above the hypercross corner, as opposed to along its edge, as in the Calvary arrangement, the eighth cube is hidden in plain sight in the spaces between the six cubes surrounding the central seventh. The eighth cube appears as a framework shadow in two space between the shadows of the six cubes and the shadow of the central seventh in the form of a Roger Penrose, or impossible, cube so called for being an optical illusion in which the edges of a regular 3D cube are solid but appear such that the background legs overlap those usually seen in the front. When such an impossible optical illusion shape as the Penrose cube casts a shadow in two space, 
It is the same shadow as that which would usually be cast by the shape of a regular 3D cube. Just as we saw the antipode cubes as paired hexagons in the diagram of Hakabalah, so in the 2D shadow of the 3D model of the 4D hypercross, we see a hexagon shape cast from above the corner of an impossible cube. Part 4. Hypershapes. Aside from the singularity or sphere whose hypershape is the nested hypersphere or torus, there are five regular polygonal solid forms in three space that may have counterpart hypershapes in higher dimensional hyperspace. These five regular solids are commonly called the platonic solids, and they include the cube of 12 edges, 8 corners, and 6 square-shaped sides, the tetrahedron of 6 edges, 4 corners, and 4 triangular sides, the octahedron of 8 edges, 7 corners, and eight triangular sides, the isosahedron of 15 edges, 12 corners, and 20 triangular sides, and finally the dodecahedron of 35 edges, 20 corners, and 12 pentagonal sides. The secret of understanding the hypershape forms of these five regular 3D solids lies with the additional truncated or snub versions of these original five, which are commonly called the 16 Archimedean solids. These 16 mixed polygonal solids comprise the space occurring within and between these original five solids when they are nested within their own shapes or within one another. We begin by re-examining the cube. Its six sides intersecting in three vertices per corner are the only use of the regular square shape in any of the five platonic 3D solids. From above one of its eight corners the 2D shadow cast by the 3 cube in flat plane space is a hexagon. Likewise, because a cube can be divided apart into a pair of intersecting tetrahedrons, a stelloctahedron, the hypershape of the tetrahedron, can be extrapolated from inside a 3 cube, just as a hexagram hides inside the hexagon shadow of the cube in 2 space. When we examine the hypershape of the tetrahedron further, we find that, similarly to the impossible eighth cube within and between the other seven in a regular hypercross, if we were to unfold the hypertetrahedron as a flat 2D shadow, it would tessellate onto a flat plane space below the 3D shape of the stelloctahedron in the shape of an impossible triangle hidden within and between the twin tetrahedrons. This impossible triangle is a 2D optical illusion formed by the unfolding and tessellating onto a flat surface of the edges of the stelloctahedron. The next larger form of regular 3D solid with all equilateral triangular sides is the isosahedron. Its hypershape casts as many various forms of 3D shadow as it has edges, corners, and sides. Here we see one such depicting this as a yellow cube connecting the interior corners of a hyper isosahedron formed by nesting one isosahedron of smaller area upside down within another of larger area.
Thus, just as the tetrahedron can be doubly nested within the regular cube, so too can a cube be singularly nested within a doubled isosahedron. The isosahedron can not only nest within itself a perfectly regular three-space cube formed inside a hyper-isosahedron that is nested within itself. It can also house the next higher order shape, the dodecahedron. Here we begin to see the role played by the 16 Archimedean solids as occurring between these dual nested forms such that between the outer isosahedron in blue and the inner dodecahedron in green we find the now familiar stalactahedron shape in purple. Thus we begin to see that one level of hypershape occurs between two nested forms of regular solid. Likewise, the Archimedean solids occur as slices from one corner to another of these hypershapes. The dodecahedron of 12 pentagonal shaped sides likewise can serve as a hypershape which has a smaller backwards nested version of the form within a larger version of itself. However, even in this form, the hyperdodecahedron can also nest within itself another of the five regular platonic solid forms on the next lower level of complexity, the isosahedron. We see here the outer dodecahedron in green, the inner isosahedron in blue, and the hyper dodecahedron portrayed as the stellation of an Archimedean solid between them in purple. The hyper dodecahedron, however, has 35 edges and 20 corners in addition to its 12 sides of 5 edges each. Thus, to depict these additional sums as 3D modeled shadows of the hyper dodecahedron, we see here nested inside the regular 3D dodecahedron in blue, a cube in green, a tetrahedron in yellow, and an octahedron in red. Again, the spaces between these nested regular solids form the truncated and snub 16 Archimedean solids. All hypershapes in 4D can be modeled by combining these five basic polygonal solids in 3-space by nesting them with one another. And these five solids are in turn comprised of the only three flat regular polygons, the pentagon, square, and triangle. In my book, The MPDR, I refer to such hypershapes throughout as metaphors. Basic Metaphysics, a lecture by Jonathan Barlow Gee.